Ahla wa sahla, marhaban everybody. My name is Hana Al Qassas. I'm an Arabic instructor at Kimaka Community College. I teach Arabic 1 and Arabic 123 for native speaker. And here's Abdul. Hi, my name is Abdul, and I am one of Hannah's students in her Arabic 123 class. And I'm very excited to be part of this Arabic presentation. Ahlan wa sahlan, Abdul. What, what this presentation is about? This uh, presentation is specifically about Arabic calligraphy and how it originated, and the history, and um, the different forms of Arabic, and um, uh, the impact of, of this beautiful language. Good. And also, this is, we have the same presentation in two languages. Abdul will present the I one. I will do the English part, and Miss Hanna, she will take care of the Arabic part. Perfect, Abdul. Okay, let me share the screen with the. Okay. 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 Tell us about the uh, Arabic calligraphy, Al Khat Al Arabi. So. Uh, my take on the Arabic calligraphy um, is that, you know, it's obviously from the Arabic language, um, and Arabic belongs to the group of uh, Semitic alphabetical scripts. Mm -hmm. uh, these scripts are consonants that are represented in writing and the, the markings of the vowels, which are uh, uh, di diacritics, are optional. So they're not required. Can you mention the five Semitic languages, please? What are they? So uh, the five Semitic languages are Aramaic, Hebrew, Arabic, Old South Arabian, and mm -hmm. South Semitic. And on this map, you could see where they originated. Good. OK, so the ancient Arabic script. Mm -hmm. So basically, this um, component is uh, the, also called the North Arabic script. It eventually became the Arabic script of the Quran, which is uh, you know the book of of Islam, and is related to the uh, Nabatean and Syriac script, which was derived from the earlier Ar Aramaic script. Mm -hmm. Old Aramaic is, is the language of um, Jesus and uh, Jesus Christ and the apostles. It dates from the second millennial uh, BC, and some dialects of the scripts are still spoken by small groups in the Middle East today. So we could still find uh, this language and uh, even till this day. So very historical language. Like Chaldean mm -hmm. and Assyrian. Good. So the impact of the Arabic language. Uh, so uh, the impact was really, uh, you know, globally felt with the spread of Islam. The Arabic alphabet was adapted by several non-Arab nations, and uh, for writing and their own language. So let me give you an example. So Iran, uh, the Arabic letters are used to write Farsi. Mm -hmm. with the addition of four letters to represent the phonetics that do not exist in Arabic. So this could be like P or like the CH ch, ch, or like the Z, the Z pronunciation mm -hmm. and the G, like um, like uh, girl or, or um, uh, good. So that, that type of pronunciation is not found in the Arabic language, but you could find it in the Iranian language. I think also ch. Yeah, I, I mentioned ch, ch uh -huh. the ch, ch. 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 So the Ottoman Turks also used the Arabic alphabet until 1929 and added another uh, letter. So this alphabet was also used to write other Turkish languages and dialects, such as Kazakh, Uzbek, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. So several other languages are used uh, that several other languages use the Arabic alphabet at one time or another, and these include uh, like the um, more of the Indian region, like uh, and the Pakistani, the Urdu, the Malay, Swahili, 
Yeah. yeah. So you could see like the, sh the shades of green, uh, like the lighter green more to the right of the map. Uh, so these also were impacted by the Arabic language. You could see like the, the, the language in, in, in these cultures. And uh, also there's Algerian tribal, uh, uh, the, the Hausa and others. So um, one important thing about the Arabic language is that it's the language of the, of the religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. For Muslims, the Quran is the actual word of God, which, revealed, which was revealed through the archangel uh, Jibril or mm -hmm. Gabriel in English to the prophet of uh, Islam, Muhammad. During the 23 year period uh, of his prof prof um, prophetic mission, it was revealed in the Arabic language, which became therefore the language of Islam, even for non-Arab Muslims. So this is why Arabic is a very, a very popular language in Muslim countries. And remember, this is very important to remember that not all Muslims are Arabs and not all Arabs are Muslims. With the increasing number of non-Arab Muslims, mm -hmm. there was a greater need for facilitating the learning of Arabic so that non-Arab Muslims could read the Quran in its original form. Since several letters of the Arabic alphabet share the same shapes, and mm -hmm. since the vowels are not clearly indicated, some reform was needed to avoid confusion and a system of naqat or ijam, letter pointing, Oh, can I add and something? Tashid, a tashid, tashid. Uh, was can developed. I say something? Yes, go ahead. Like uh, in the old days, uh, after the Islam came, most of the Arabic letters they didn't have a dot. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was it became so confusing for most of the people mm -hmm. to read Arabic. As you see here on on this slide, like how it used to be, mm -hmm. like with no dots. So it was so hard for people to read Arabic script. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, it's okay. Thank you for clarifying that, teacher. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, to further uh, get into the history of this reform, uh, the guy who invented this uh, system or, or mm -hmm. system of letter pointing, uh, which is called in Arabic, Naqat or Ijam, is called Abu Aswad al Duali. Duali. <laughs> Please forgive me. That's why I have the Arabic constructor here <laughs> to correct me. So, Duali, uh -huh. uh, which he died in the year 688. Uh, he was the legendary founder of this Arabic grammar and is credited with inventing this system that made it easier for non-Arabs to read Arabic. Mm -hmm. And uh, this system, it places large colored dots to indicate the tashkil. Mm -hmm. uh, this was also used uh, with the kuf Kufic scripts, mm -hmm. yeah. but um, it proved to be somewhat cumbersome to use with the smaller scripts nice. or in ordinary writing. So cursive scripts coexisted with Kufic and date back uh, to before Islam, but because in the early stages of their development, mm -hmm. uh, they lacked discipline and elegance, they were usually used for the secular purpose only. So under the Umayyads and the Abbasids, uh, the, the, the Turks, um, court requirements for correspondence and record keeping resulted in many developments to the cursive scripts. Yes. So this is like the history. Um, and several styles were devised to fulfill these needs. I'm gonna see this, we're gonna learn about these styles more in this uh, presentation, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect coming ahead. So Perfect. Abu Ali Muhammad ibn Muqlah, he died, uh, uh, his death was in the year 1940, um, along with his brother, became accomplished uh, calligraphers mm -hmm. in Baghdad in an early age. His system utilized the dot as a measured unit for line proportions and a circle with a diameter equals to the Aleph's height as a measuring unit for letter proportions. Wow. So that's how they their system uh, for the the dots. So, in so the calligraphy. I think now we can uh, like you can introduce each style of 
Mm -hmm. Handwriting. Different cursive styles. Good. Okay. So what's the first one? What you call it? So the first cursive style I will introduce is called the Nesach style. Mm -hmm. And this style, uh, it means copying. Nice. It was developed in the 10th century. Mm -hmm. I, kinda, I really like this style. It looks very nice. Mm -hmm. um, it was developed in the 10th century and refined into a fine art form in Turkey in the 16th century. Since then, it became generally accepted for writing the Quran. So this, oh. this uh, writing was used to write the books, uh, the Quran. So uh, the Nasakh was adapted as the preferred style for typesetting and printing. It is a small script Mm -hmm. That line, which their li its lines are thin and letters shapes are round. Okay, can we see the video? I think also this uh, handwriting is used in most like for uh, to write formal. Qurans mm -hmm. and formal like for thing. printing in a mask. Mm -hmm. It's a okay. nice style. Let's see the video, please. And show like how to write the uh, the, uh, the phrase Bismillah and cursive and nesakh and nesakh cursive, right? Mm -hmm. One form of uh, this cursive. So you see how the the lines are thin and the, the shapes, he kind of rounds them off. So this is what is the, the hallmark of this type of cursive. Nice. Uh, they go, they kind of round off the shape and the lines are, they kind of thin out. So right. yeah, it's a very nice, nice style. It's not too much, it's not like, you know, some, some styles are, are, which we will get into later. This one is more, it's kind of calmer and it, um, you know, kind of more spread out. You can see that on the, those two pictures on the top, how, you know, the line is thinned out in the Bismillah, the scene. And I believe this cursive, this type of cursive writing is easier to read than others. You're right. Especially for you as a heritage speaker, you're right. Yeah. Good notice. And that's a tashkil he's doing right now. Nice video. And remember, the tashkil was uh, originated from Abu Aswad al Duel. Duel. It's like the short vowels in English language. Mm -hmm. Nice, very nice. Let's move to the next slide. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Nope. Okay, how we go? How we go to the next slide? Okay, can you from here? Thank you for helping me. <laughs> Go ahead. Teamwork. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, next. so without further ado, um, the next cursive style is called uh, Thuluth style. Mm -hmm. This Thuluth style is a more impressive, stately, uh, calligraphic style, mm -hmm. uh, which is often used for like titles or epigrams rather than lengthy texts. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So its form evolves over the centuries and it has many, many variations that are found on architectural monuments. Mm -hmm. You go to like some famous landmarks like mosques, you might be able to observe this type of uh, calligraphic style. 
So uh, it's also on glass, metalwork, textiles, and wood. So uh, Mamluk Thuluth of the 14th century was heavy and large. Mm -hmm. And while the Ottomans preferred, uh, the Ottoman Turks preferred the simpler, more refined version, uh, it's, they still practice this today. Uh, with that being said, they, they still practice the, this type of calligraphic style, but on a simpler uh, version than when it first started. And uh, would you like to start the video to, okay, to demonstrate good. this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I go through? So it's it's well around the side. Right. Yeah, this one um, more has a more um, scrunched up style. Basically, it has a strong. It feels like it's it's not as spread out much. It's more it's grouped together. The words and the tashkid they're grouped together. Mm -hmm. And I think you could also uh, create shapes and different animals and yeah, yeah I've seen it before like yeah, that. Yeah, I think you have, the, we have that in the last uh, mm -hmm. slide of this presentation. Yeah, so this is more artistic. It's not really used a lot in books mm -hmm. uh, or for reading, unlike the first uh, cursive style that we went over. You could see it more on glass and textile, monuments. You could see on the two pictures on, mm -hmm. on the slide, mm -hmm. it's not as spread out as the, the first cursive style. I, I hear the squishing of yeah, that. The <laughs> they have special tools mm -hmm. they use for writing. Right? Mm -hmm. I think it emphasizes like the heavy nature mm -hmm. and the large curves. Yeah, the, it's like heavy and large. That's how I describe it. And it's like almost grouped up together. Yep. But it's also a nice, beautiful style. Oh, yeah. Nice. It takes a long time, wow. Nice. Look at the shape of that, that's like a diamond. Mm -hmm. Tired. <laughs> okay, good. Let's move to the next slide, please. Oh, sorry. Okay, and think that's the next slide. Okay, so uh, the next slide, uh, this st slide or style is called the Rika style. Mm -hmm. So this is a simpler style of everyday writing. Um, it is very economical uh, and easy to write. Mm -hmm. uh, it replaces the above uh, mentioned rika and is popular uh, for writing both Turkish and Arabic. So you could really see this type of writing in a lot of uh, 
work in the CA. And every day, people every day, they yeah. use it for everyday writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's watch a video because it's very simple. And it's not as time consuming as uh, no. the previous style. Mm -hmm. It's everyday writing. Most of the Arab, they use it everyday writing. It's, see, it's faster. Even when he's writing, it's faster. It's not artistic form of uh, of cursive writing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in the stories. In the stories of they don't use two dots, they use like a dash in this mm -hmm. handwriting. Even I notice everything like mostly above the line in the written, as you see in this slide, like for Bismillah yeah. Rahman Rahim on the left, see all the letters, most of them, they are above the line, even the Ra. Mm -hmm. mm. That's nice. <laughs> Can we move to the next one? So click on it. Mm -hmm. So the next style, uh, cursive style, is called the Kufic style. Mm -hmm. uh, this originated in uh, North African and uh, El Andalus, uh, Muslim Andalus. Yeah. And the preferred styles are basically in, like, this pre is preferred in the Maghrebi West and the uh, Andalusi. Mm -hmm which retain much of the qualities of Kufic, but with more uh, flowing and cursive. So this is like uh, more of a flowing and a cursive, uh, cursive lines. And they're uh, uh, very delicate rather than heavy proportions and forms. So as you could see from the pictures, this one is, uh, you know this is a different style and it's more more like on the line of uh you know for uh you know it was preferred in the early um prominence as a quranic transcription and architectural decoration mm -hmm. uh it, it also is used in architect too i've i have noticed that um so uh, it was developed by the Nabataean um, Nabataean Nabataean alphabet mm -hmm. in the city of Kufa. So that's oh, where it originated in the city of Kufa. That's, that's where it gets the Kufic style. Oh, that, so okay. that's what I meant by, uh, you know, it has retains much of the Kufic qualities of the Kufic culture, uh, in that it's like flowing and it's more round. Uh, as you could see, more here. round or more corners. I see like more. You see like here in the video, it's like more corners. Okay. Yeah, let's let's see the video. I think right. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? No, can it's okay. It's a little bit. Uh, I 
I think different type of pulpit, yeah. I think different types. See, that's one like square, that one is like round. Good, very nice. He's using the ruler for measurement. I think each like uh, style has a different types. Like this one, I see as in a, this light like curvy, and this one like with the edges and the, so, in the corner. Uh, right? So I guess the Kupik style. It's angular. Oh, this, oh. What she makes. Wow, nice. Masha Allah. <laughs> oh, that's what it says, Can you read it? Mm -hmm. So just to clarify, there are there are different types of kupik. This one that, that was displayed in the video is more of a geometrical uh, style, which has a lot of squares. Mm -hmm. The one I was referring to earlier was the ones that you see in the picture, where it's more rounded and it's like used uh, for like uh, in scripts. Mm. So um, nice. just to clarify that concept. Wow. Okay. So the, the next style is called the Farsi style. So uh, mm -hmm. this style uh, was developed in Iran in the 14th and 15th century. Uh, it is most fluid and it, it's one of the, it's the most fluid and expressive of the scripts. Mm -hmm. uh, and also it is used extensively in copying romantic and mystical uh, epics in uh, Persian. So, uh, Nesta, like, basically, uh, characteristics of this style, mm -hmm. this Farsi style, it has very short vertical mm -hmm. um, without any serifs and deep curved horizontals. So, you could see that in the picture right here. Like, uh, the horizontal that. lines, they're more extended, and the verticals, they kind of like uh pressed down so they're short so it slants also uh to the right more to the right oh. in contrast to all the other styles so you can see like it's kind of like angled to the right nice click the video yeah go ahead Wow, he connected the first word with the second one with no space. Can you read it? Can you read it? That's the corn. Yeah. 
Black is on your right. Black is on your right. Black is And this is the Farsi style. Let's see what you write. Let's read it. Can we read it? Okay. Can you read it for a challenge? Just for a challenge. Mm, let's have you read it first. La <laughs> I read the first word. La takun salban fatuksar wa la takun layinan fatuksar. Can you uh, translate it into English? Sub, yani hard. So the last style um, mm -hmm. is the Diwani style. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, this style of calligraphy is a cursive style, uh, which was developed mm -hmm. during the reign of. Uh, the early Ottoman Turks in the 16th and 17th century. Mm -hmm. It was invented by Hussam Rumi mm -hmm. and reached a, its height of popularity under Suleiman the first, uh, which he is also known as the Magnificent. The year was 1520 to 1566 is when he reigned and uh, the spaces between the letters are often narrow, so some characteristics include the narrowness uh, between the letters, mm -hmm. the lines ascending upwards, and uh, uh, oh. the lines ascend upwards from right to left, and the larger variations called uh, jali are filled with dense decorations of dots and diacritical marks in the space between uh, the letters giving it a compact appearance. Diwani is difficult to read and write due to its heavy stylization. As you can see from the other calligraphy styles, some of them are easier to read and some of them are harder. This one is a little harder because of uh, its compact appearance and heavy stylization. So it became the ideal script for writing court documents as it ensured confidentiality and prevented forgery. So that was oh. its use. Thank you for your time. Glad to be part of this exciting presentation on Arabic calligraphy. Thank you. It's really nice work. I like the videos also. They show a lot. Khairun Nasi and Fang. For the other one, Atlata Pan Salvan. I don't think how, for picture, for dressing, and laying and soft, for torso. Yeah, there is a short video, and that is plain, but I just feel like very hard to do. So uh, can you can you say خَيْرٌ نَاسِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ What does it mean خَيْرٌ نَاسِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ Bravo, bravo. See, I listen in class. <laughs> okay, so here 
what do you have? Same, I see, I read same sentence, but a different type of calligraphy. So, oh, let's go back. Oh my God. So the first sentence, it's in Nesach, right? Mm -hmm. Second one in Pharisee. Third one in Diwani. Wow. Fourth one in Sulus. And the last one in Ruqa. But no dots in it. <laughs> nice. Very nice one. Different variety. Mm -hmm. This is more artistic. Mm -hmm. So what do you have here? Oh, it shows different pictures of handwriting. You want to explain like a... So there are still uh, many st other styles used in different places and times that can't be all mentioned in our limited time that we have for this presentation. Mm -hmm. But they combine a form of fantastic wealth of Arabic uh, and creativity, um, you know, artistic creativity, as you could see from the pictures, uh, and ever renewing vigor. The traditional classification of the main styles also include um, muhaqqaq, which is less round than tuluth, and reihani, which is similar to a small muhaqqaq. Oh, those different types of yeah, Arabic just, calligraphy. Just a few of the ones that were mentioned. I think we're almost done. So here's uh, the video I think you told me about before mm -hmm. this. It's about like uh, how hard it is to be a calligrapher. A calligrapher. Yep. So, ready to watch it? Yeah. Okay. So, it's a skill, very... It's an art. Yes. Oh, see the tools, the pen that you use. <laughs> so there's wow. a lot more to it than meets the eye oh yeah wow that's i like the video I, and i loved his expression about the letter they sitting beside each other's <laughs> In a small room. Oops, I do that all the time. 
So I think your presentation are done. Bravo, bravo. It was really good. Thank you for sharing this information with us. Do you like to say anything at the end? A wonderful time uh, talking about the beautiful Arabic language and the different forms of calligraphy. Uh, and you know your presentation is going to be online. Oh yeah, I hope everybody. I can help, uh, however I can and spread the knowledge of once again this beautiful Arabic language. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you Abdul. Thank you so much for your time. Ila liqa. Ila liqa. Thank you so much and please give give any if you have any more to share with us just email me with that thank you so much stay in touch yep we are thank you so much and i hope people who watch this get something out of it and they will they will for sure thank you so much bye-bye very welcome Bye.